Welcome to our lecture online. We know that methane has been increasing in our atmosphere for quite a while now. The atmospheric concentration of methane has increased from about 800 parts per billion to about 1800 parts per billion between the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and where we are today. So the question is, what kind of effect does that have on how the greenhouse gases hold back the temperature or hold back the heat, keeping it from getting back into space? Remember, about 5.5% of all the heat is held back by the greenhouse gases, which causes the world to be much warmer than it otherwise would be if they didn't do that. The question is, can the increases in methane affect the climate, affect the temperature of the world by a significant amount? Well, there are three things we need to look at. First of all, how much has the methane increased? Secondly, how many molecules of methane are there in the atmosphere relative to the other greenhouse gases? And thirdly, what radiation, what frequency, what wavelength of the radiation coming back from the Earth is stopped by methane? Well, first, we must realize that there's been a very significant increase in the concentration of methane from 800 to 800 parts per billion, which means that's a 125% increase. That's a much greater increase than we've seen in the increases of carbon dioxide. And we know that methane is a greenhouse gas. But then when we take a look at the concentration, we're talking about in terms of parts per billion, not parts per million. So there's not that many methane molecules in the atmosphere. For example, compared to carbon dioxide, for every one methane molecule, there are more than 200 carbon dioxide molecules. So you would think on that principle alone that carbon dioxide is probably a much more important greenhouse gas than methane. Compared to water vapor, for every one methane molecule, there are more than 4,000 water vapor molecules. And we know that water vapor is able to hold back many more ranges of infrared radiation coming from the Earth. Therefore, not just by number, but simply by the kind of radiation it can hold back, water vapor is a much more effective uh, greenhouse gas than methane. And then let's take a look at where methane holds back the radiation. There's two main places. One happens at about 7.6 micrometers, and the other one at 2.4 micrometers. Remember, there's this window where much of the radiation gets back to space, which is somewhere between 7 and 12 micrometers. Carbon dioxide, together with water vapor, does a lot of holding back this radiation, so carbon dioxide is very active in the range from about 14 to 16 micrometers. But notice that methane holds back part of this radiation right here. So not only does water vapor hold back that radiation, but methane as well. But not all of it. Quite a bit of it still makes it to space. That's what this blank portion is right here. So by increasing the methane concentration, you would think that this peak right here would become greater and more radiation would be held back. But it's a very narrow band in this region right here. So it doesn't appear that the current concentration of methane are doing a lot as far as holding back the radiation from the Earth. Then when we look at this region right here at 2.4 micrometers, there's so little radiation being sent off the surface of the Earth at that particular wavelength that even if all of it is, is held back, which in this case it almost is, then we really don't have to worry about it because it's such a very small amount. So since these are the only two places where methane can hold back the radiation, methane doesn't appear to be doing a whole lot as far as keeping the Earth warm. It's a contributing factor, but it's a relatively small factor. It's probably somewhere in the 1% of the total greenhouse effect that's currently being, being uh, contributed by methane versus the other 99% or close to 99% by water vapor and carbon dioxide. So it's actually a very small contributor, and it looks like the increases in methane are not going to make a lot of difference, and perhaps that's why we haven't seen much of an effect with these enormous increases in the methane concentrations. Again, when we say enormous increases, it's relative to what it was like in 1850. By absolute numbers, we're talking about a very small amount of methane that is in the Earth's atmosphere, and therefore a very small, apparently, a very small effect on the greenhouse effect. And that's how it is.